I became a researcher because I found it riveting to try and explain the phenomena of life. I've always thought it interesting to combine statistical and theoretical concepts. Since I was small, I've always been drawn to the matter of finding effective solutions to particular problems. Because I could never stop asking questions. Because sometimes one has to find the answers to questions one didn't even know the day before. Because I've always been interested in the gigantic force generated by an earthquake. Because discovering unknown things in nature to me is fascinating. I had a great teacher at primary school. I've always wanted to travel around the world to understand how it ticks. In university, my paths crossed with an outstanding professor. Combining Chinese medicine and Western medicine to cure difficult diseases and help more people is my new challenge. Hello, this is Pets Bards for FNR TV. I'm standing in front of the Chamber of Deputies in Luxembourg City. It was here in May 1999 that the deputies unanimously passed the law that defined the National Research Fund in the public sector. Mrs. Erna Henneko Schöpschus was minister back then, and she can certainly tell us more. Hello, Mrs. Henniker. What was the reason behind the law concerning the National Research Fund back then? After the CRPs were founded in 1987, we evaluated the situation in 1997 to find out what these public establishments had brought us. We created a forum of Luxembourgish and foreign experts and came to the conclusion that we needed a tool that would not only help us finance community projects between CRPs, but that would also group Luxembourgish research on a collective level. That's the reason why, in 1999, the law concerning the National Research Fund was passed. Apart from that, the law fitted in well with the European context back then. In fact, since the year 2000, there has been invocation to invest massively in public research. As pointed out by Mrs. Henniko, the sector of public research in Luxembourg has massively expanded. Back then, the government decided to grant an increase of governmental contributions to the funding of public research. Today, the budget designated to public research is estimated at 180 millions of euros. In the spirit of the objectives defined during the European Summit Conference in Lisbon, but also to encourage and promote research and innovation, the governmental plan of 2009 views to raise investments in R&D to 1% of the GDP, which means the current budget will be doubled to 367 million euros. So, wouldn't it be interesting to find out how the National Research Fund is doing and what they are currently up to? Hello, Mr. Henrion. Maybe you can give me a concrete idea of how the FNR has evolved since it was established. The fund has managed to develop a series of structural and thematic tools dedicated to the promotion and the financing of Luxembourgish research. These tools have definitely contributed to the reinforcement of Luxembourg's reputation as an international research site. On top of that, we have signed an achievement agreement with the Ministry of Research, which determines the financial conditions of our objectives. What are the National Research Fund's goals, objectives, today? Today's goals are split into three sections. The first one is to support the researchers in order to boost their scientific qualities and establish a certain excellence. Secondly, improve Luxembourg's scientific environment on an institutional level. And thirdly, a matter of great importance, stimulate Luxembourg's scientific culture, most especially with regard to young people. There are four research programs, CORE, ATTRACT, PEARL and INTER. Could you maybe give us some insight into these? These four programs help us to finance research projects in fields of utmost importance to Luxembourg. 
The core program is dedicated to the support of research workers in Luxembourg and is, to all intents and purposes, our biggest program. The Pearl and Attract programs are aimed to attract high-profile research workers to Luxembourg. Finally, the INTER program encourages international synergies between our research workers. And now, let's go into the field to take a closer look at what this all means. Mrs. Siebentritt, Mr. Dale, what are you currently working on in Luxembourg? We are working on solar cells and new material for solar cells. The solar cells we are working on are thin film cells, which mean they are a hundred times thinner than a human hair. So their production necessitates less energy and material, which helps to save money. Another advantage is they can be made to be flexible. So what we are doing is creating solar cells like these ones. This solar cell was produced in our laboratory. Apart from that, we are developing new structures and new processes for these cells. We are using completely new material, which means that a number of fundamental questions still remain unsolved. So we are studying questions like, how does electricity flow through, or how do the cells absorb the light? Mrs. Siebentritt, how did you come to Luxembourg? The announced position corresponded exactly to my field of research, so needless to say, I was very interested. When I got here, I found the working conditions to be very good. I was given top-notch equipment, and the FNR's core program also had something to do with it. Currently, we have two core projects in operation. The ATTRACT program, through which Phil came abroad, did also have a positive influence. I suppose these are the main reasons why excellent researchers and scientists like yourself are drawn to Luxembourg to continue their research. That's right. The ATTRACT program has allowed me to come to Luxembourg and set up my laboratory inside Susanna's laboratory. And under her guidance, we pr try to produce uh, low-cost methods for making uh, materials inside solar cells. 